Alright guys, I'm back and I have the Roger Corman 1994 Fantastic Four film. A lot of people said that this film was never supposed to see the light of day. It was really only made so that they can keep the license so they can make a Fantastic Four film later on. Don't tell that to the people who made it though. They all believe that this film was actually going to have a theatrical release. Now if you actually have seen any of the Fantastic Four films, you know that this one's actually pretty faithful to the comic book. Granted, it is low budget. All the money went into the Things costume. You only saw the Human Torch flame on at the end of the movie, and even that was cheaply animated. But for some reason, I really still like this film. I actually like watching it. I don't know if there's actually a real release of it. Obviously, this is a bootleg copy I got from a convention. But it's still, to me, a really good Fantastic Four film. Not great. But it's better than some of the ones we're going to be showing you a little later. And this is the back of it. Obviously, Bootleg City. Now, I know that a um, documentary called Doomed that came out. It might still be on Netflix. You can probably find it. But I know for sure that that documentary is something I want to have. It really gives you insight on the movie. And you actually hear from the actors and the people who made the film. And how disappointed they were that it didn't get released. And all the hard work they put into it. But hey, what can you do? This is the 1994 Roger Corman's The Fantastic Four. Okay, we are on to the 2005 Tim Story directed Fantastic Four. Not a great interpretation, but actually one I actually enjoy. Mainly because you get Chris Evans as the Human Torch and you have Michael Chiklis as the Thing which to me were very comic book accurate. Aside from that, everything else was crap, but it was entertaining nonetheless. A step above the Roger Corman films, definitely a step above the, uh, <laughs> the one that um, just recently came out, which I will show you a little later. But this, this right here is a exclusive bonus DVD, is the making of the Fantastic Four. It's basically 50 minutes of exclusive behind the scenes footage prepping you for the release of the Fantastic Four. See the back of it. Um, I'm not sure if this came with something else or if it was a giveaway, but it looks like it may have come with something else. Usually discs like these are a part of a set, but I've never seen it anywhere else. So this is the making of the Fantastic Four. Then we actually have the actual movie itself. This is the DVD widescreen version of the Fantastic Four. I don't know who the hell thought Jessica Alba would be a good Susan Storm, but they need to be shot. They need to be shot bad. I mean, Ian Grifford um, as Mr. Fantastic wasn't bad. Not great. Those two could have been switched out and no one would have gave a damn. Yeah, this is the back of it. A lot of special features for first time theatrical release of the Fantastic Four, which I did see in a the theater. It's not bad. Like I said, Chris Evans and Michael Chiklis make the movie. And it's just kind of funny that Chris Evans would become Captain America. Love this. I <laughs> love that fun fact. But again, those two made the movie. We also have the extended cut. This um, edition is basically, I'm not even sure how many minutes are put into this. I watched it, I really couldn't tell you. <laughs> it really did not make much of a difference. But it, again, nice different uh, cover for it, as you can see, putting this one next to it. You know, it's nice to have two different uh, sleeves for it. The back of it is different, so that's nice. You know, you get at least something different out of it. This is a two disc collection, so the second disc is all special features. Are these special features the same as the one that was from the making of disc? Probably. I really can't tell you that. It's been a while since I've seen the special features on uh, the making of disc, but this is still, it, it holds a little special place in my heart because again, it's the first time they were on the big screen. Now here we have a premium edition. Now I'm not sure what country this is from. I bought this on eBay probably, Jesus, maybe about eight years ago, so it's kind of hard to say. I'm not sure if it's a German release or it's just a, another American release. There are so many releases of this movie. You get the back of it. Kind of nice. You know, I think it's German. 
So you have that. And then opening it up, you do have at least some nice interior artwork. I mean, Jessica Alba's nice to look at. <laughs> and there's a nice little booklet you get with it. You really don't get much out of it, but I like how it at least looks like a comic book for, you know, a diehard fan like myself. That's always nice to see. Too bad he couldn't reference more of the damn comic for the movie, but what are you gonna do? And you can open it up. And there's your disc. Flip it over. There you go. That is the premium edition of the Fantastic Four. And this is actually a cover of another edition I didn't pick up at the time. And if you notice, they keep making her sexier and sexier every time. You know, if you hear her top is unzipped. It wasn't like that in the um, in the movie. I don't believe, anyway. Hit me in the comment section let me know if that is the case. But I don't think she did. Now, this one is a nice, unique one. This is the Ultimate Collector set. This one actually comes with a round metal K, metal tin for it. Almost like a steel book, but I don't keep it with my steel books. It's just too small for that. But it is circular, and there's a little stand that allows you to prep it up. It's still the exact same movie. It's just a nice little unique uh, piece to have. Very easy to find. At one point, I had two copies. I ended up giving one away. I think you could get this for five bucks. I do also have it on Blu-ray. Everything's the exact same. They didn't do anything new for it. <laughs> I'm not gonna sit all sit around here and tell you otherwise. But it is a nice piece to have, and you know, this way at least I have a Blu-ray high definition version of the movie. And finally, for the first Fantastic Four film, we get a collector's DVD gift set. This one is one of my all-time favorite pieces I have in my collection. This was hard to find. I actually got this from a collector in Japan had it sent to me and it was packaged so well I am so happy with this I really have no reason to open it up because it's just another DVD of the movie nothing different but I love the figures in here they look cool they are obviously not based on the movie but on the comic book on the back of it but this is awesome I actually wouldn't mind having two of them just so I could take the figures out but that's going to be my Fantastic Four Tim Story 2005 editions. Alright guys, I also have in steelbook form, I have the Fantastic Four. This steelbook is actually pretty cool. I like the way it looks. You know, it has that border around it like a lot of Zabby remake or Zabby exclusives have. Nothing new about it, but I just like this. This just looks really cool. You can find all these things I show you for the Fantastic Four on eBay or Amazon. Super, super cheap. Okay guys, we are now on to the Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer. Just like I did with the first Fantastic Four film from Tim Story. This is a behind the scenes look on it. Kind of really more of a history of the Silver Surfer and the Fantastic Four. Now, this actually, I think, again, was a part of another package, and this is just some, something I found separately. Hit me in that comment section, let me know if you've seen this anywhere else. But this is a, um, a DVD. This is letting you know that Rise of the Silver Surfer is coming out on uh, Blu-ray and DVD on October 12th, or whenever it was released. Now, this did originally come out in 2007, directed by Tim Story. You can see in the back, they're just really giving you advertisements for different versions of the Fantastic Four. Next, I have the DVD version, which is the Power Cosmic Edition of Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer. This is a two disc set edition. Obviously, originally it must have came out at Costco. I bought this online for a couple of bucks. Nice slip cover to it. I always like my slip covers. Always keeps your stuff nice and protected. I like that this right here is actually without any graphics or any uh, typography on it. Again, two disc collection. 
nothing special about it other than the packaging. They say it's a cosmic edition, but I don't know really why. <laughs> What's so special about that? Now with this one, this one is a two disc collector's edition again of Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer. Two disc collection, nice lenticular uh, sleeve to it, but as you open it up, it's the exact same edition as this one right here. So really the only thing you're getting is a slip cover. I also have it, of course, on Blu-ray. No changes to anything. Didn't even really give you a different um, graphic to the cover. Two disc collection. Or, I'm sorry, one disc Blu-ray, but all the special features from the two discs are on here. Next, I do have Steelbook for Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer. This one, actually, I'm not sure if this is an American edition or not, but I love DVD Steelbooks. These things just are really cool. They're obviously the size of a DVD, but DVDs get more love than Blu-rays. Weird. Especially for movies that aren't that great. <laughs> I won't lie, this movie was not the best. I actually like the first one better, but, you know, why'd they have to make Light as a Fart Cloud? I have no idea, but The Silver Surfer was actually done pretty well. I, I will say that. So, you have that. Next, I have this nice little two-pack. This one, actually, I saw someone else have on uh, YouTube, and I had to hunt it down. Basically, you get the DVD, and then you get a comic book next to it. This comic book is actually something that you can find oversized. All it is, really, is an illustrated guidebook to the Fantastic Four. Probably an abridged version of it, but I just love the packaging. wish it was a little bit more sturdy. I have to sometimes, you know, put cardboard behind it to make sure it doesn't split. But, other than that, the book is really worth it, though, because I have seen excerpts from these. Really, really cool. There you have that. And then finally, I have the Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer. This is a Best Buy exclusive. It's called the Collectible Figurine Edition. And this is a DVD version yet again, but this comes with a Silver Surfer statue. I love statues that come with uh, the movies. They just really, really pop for me and they can display really well. This actually shows you a good way of seeing how the statue looks. You can get some really cool uh, stuff in here. You get a digital comic basing on Jack Kirby history. And you also get to find out some digital comics for the Ultimate Edition of the Fantastic Four. Really, really cool. But, that's going to do it. That is my Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer Edition. Let's just get this over with. <laughs> this is the 2015 Just Trank directed Fantastic Four film. The less said about it the better. This is actually the only version I have of it. I'm sure there are people out there who like it who didn't think it was bad. It has so much potential to be what the Fantastic Four was when it first came out. A, a kind of a horror sci-fi um, combination. So much potential in here. I mean you had good actors, they just were given terrible scripts and you know, you're, I'm not sure what to believe. Some people said that Josh Trank was drunk sometimes on the set or you know, there's a lot of rumors out there. You can find a lot of it on YouTube, but it's just a bad movie. It looks like a chunk was ripped out when they did that one year later. It's like a whole chunk of the movie that was important was ripped out of it. I just don't get it. I do not understand this. I just hope that, you know, we with Marvel now having a Fantastic Four back, they will be able to actually do it right. Um, they've all said that they're going to take their time and develop them. You know, you may see, I would actually like to see Reed Richards pop up in an Ant-Man movie. You know, say, showing that he was a part of S.H.I.E.L.D. with Hank Pym. You know, he doesn't have to be young like everybody else, even though they want someone young to have a franchise. I just think that no matter what, Kevin Feige and uh, Disney and Marvel Cinematic Universe is going to do such a better job than this mess. <laughs> oh, and I didn't even say, this is obviously the steel book 
This is a Blu-ray digital copy version, the only one that I have. Eventually I will get the regular Blu-ray just so I can have it in my collection, but I'm not in any hurry to get it. Alright guys, we are in the D's, the double D's to be exact, we are at Daredevil. This February 14th, 2003 movie, yes, that is correct, they actually released this movie on Valentine's Day. Not smart, but <laughs> this movie starred Ben Affleck as Matt Murdock slash Daredevil, Jennifer Garner as Elektra, Michael Clark Duncan, the late great Mark Michael Clark Duncan as Kingpin, Colin Farrell as a slightly over-the-top bullseye, Joey Pantanello as Ben Urich. Now, trivia question one. Who was the writer slash artist who had a five second cameo in this movie? And trivia question two. Who did Kevin Smith play in this movie? Hit me in the comment section below and let me know. Now, this edition is a two disc edition. This is the regular one that did come out. I recommend this edition over all the other ones because the second disc has a ton of special features, has a great documentary on Deer Devil, the comic book character, all the way from Stan Lee to the, um, Kevin Smith, giving you all the information on how Deer Devil was created and the writers who helped make him great. Again, this is Deer Devil, the widescreen edition. Next up, we have what I call the worthless edition. This is the director's cut. This is actually has a second subplot that involves Coolio. While it does show Matt Murdock and Foggy Nelson as great lawyers, which we do want to see, it just took up way too much time and frankly Coolio is just not a good actor and it just wasted a lot of time. But for all you curious out there, the first edition I showed you is what you want. But for guys who want to know just how this movie could have been, check this edition out back of it they do have some special features about the making of the um, extra 30 minutes they put in but again to me I would rather see the theatrical cut uh, and this is obviously a slipcover edition Ugh. haven't opened this in a while but it's the exact same as the cover now this one is probably my favorite out of all the editions this is the I believe it's a Japanese edition this one actually I found online on eBay while I was looking for random other things but it was super super cheap I believe I got this for maybe $15 with shipping but it did take a while to come because it had to be imported in but I haven't opened it because well it loses value when it's open even though I do not plan on selling it it looks cool like this with all the um, logos on it the back of it I like that it is different from all the rest and one thing here, I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier, but a next trivia question, and this one's for all the money. Michael Clark Duncan played the Kingpin twice. First time was in this movie directed by Stephen Nortonson, who also directed Ghost Rider. But what other animated TV show did he play the Kingpin in? And who is the superhero? Which means Daredevil and a certain other superhero are in the same universe. Hit me in the comment section below and let me know. But this is Deer Devil, the Jap or the <laughs> Japanese import. Last but certainly not least is the Blu-ray. Now I only have the director's cut on Blu-ray right now. I do plan on getting the original version. Again, I love the original version compared to the director's cut, but I got this for two dollars. Couldn't pass it up. It does have a ton of special features on it. But again, I would rather have the original one as well. And that is Deer Devil by Stephen Nortonton, starring Ben Affleck. Alright guys, we are on to the E's. We are now at the 2005 release of Elektra, starring Jennifer Garner, directed by Rob Bowman. This is a direct sequel to Deer Devil, starring Ben Affleck. Not the greatest sequel in the world, Best Forgotten. This movie really doesn't really have anything to do with the Elektra comic book storyline. It is, as far as I know, a brand new story. This is a one disc collection. Nice slip cover. 
The Steelbook is pretty much the same as this one. There are two versions of the Steelbook. Actually, I believe three that are out right now. I unfortunately don't have any of them. This will show you the special features for them. This movie is in my collection simply because I am a purist. <laughs> this is the 2005 release of Elektra. But I also have the director's cut. Why? Because I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> this one, unlike the Daredevil director's cut, actually has a scene in there that needed to be in the movie which would connect it to the Daredevil movie itself. Ben Affleck actually did film one scene as Matt Murdock that was actually a dream sequence that Elektra had. For some reason, I guess they cut it for time, but it would have actually made the film connect to Daredevil that much more. Great cover. I actually like this one better than the original. This actually has a two-disc collection, so the second one really has information on it that gives you stuff about the director's cut, about Elektra as a character. So if you're going to get a copy, I actually recommend this one right here. But that is the 2005 release of Elektra. Alright guys, we are on to Ghost Rider, a movie that came out in 2007, directed by Mark Steven Johnson, the same director who directed Ben Affleck's Daredevil. First one I'm going to show you right now is a press kit. I'm not sure if this came out before the release of the movie or before the release of the DVD. But as you can see, mine is sealed. Really nothing on the back of it. I will, if I can, put up an image of the contents inside of it. To keep it rare, I'm going to keep mine sealed because I honestly have not seen anyone else actually show one of these before. So, kind of happy to have it like that. Plus, it adds value to it if it's unopened. Now, I don't plan on selling my movies. It just helps to add to the value. Now, we're on to the first release of the DVD starring Nicolas Cage and Eva Mendes. Not the greatest movie in the world, but you know what? It was all we had at that point. We are going to be getting Ghost Rider in a TV series coming out, I believe, in the next two years. Maybe it's going to be from the same guy who played it in S.H.I.E.L.D. We're not sure yet. But this release is a one-disc collection. A lot of different releases for this, as you're going to see. This one did come with a digital copy, but back then when this came out, the digital copies were on a separate disc. And very rarely worked. I didn't try this one because I actually do have it already in a digital copy. But this movie, I mean, it's divisive. Terrible plot. Nicolas Cage could have played this well, but for some reason he played it, as usual, a little weird. But I'll let you guys decide on whether or not it was a good movie or not. Next, I have the two-disc collection. This is an extended two-disc collection. It's supposed to have, like, extra footage never seen before. I believe it's less than, like, 20 minutes put into the film. I've watched it. I, myself, couldn't find out where it was. But the big plus is there's two hours of special features, which is something I, myself, look forward to. You can see there's the back of it. All your special features. Slip cover is pretty much the same artwork as inside. There is your two disc extended cut of Ghost Rider. Next I have an extended edition. This one actually tells you there's 10 minutes of additional footage, which is probably the same thing as the extended cut um, I just showed you. Just a really cool uh, slip cover for it. Not open because obviously I have so many copies of it. In the back is the exact same as the original version. Then we have a three disc collection. This one's actually called the three disc limited edition extended cut if you guys are looking for it. Pretty easy to find and use uh, video stores. It's really all the same things that's in the extended cut, but this one comes with a extra third disc, which is basically Comic Con footage. As they call it, Circus City bonus um, disc. So obviously that tells you where it um, was released at. But only thing I really liked in this movie, I really, really liked, was Sam Neill as the original Ghost Rider, right there. But he was only in the movie as Ghost Rider for about five minutes. Not cool. <laughs> but that is your three disc limited edition extended cut. Well, possibly my favorite edition that I have is this limited edition Ghost Rider DVD set with extended bonus features, which is all the same stuff you've seen 
but this comes in a nice little package. Um, it does have a unique collector's uh, lenticular right here of Nicolas Cage transforming to Ghost Rider. Hopefully you're able to see that. Weird thing is it comes with a Ghost Rider bandana. I'm not sure why. And it also has three great cell phone wallpaper images. Alright. <laughs> but this one actually has 20 minutes of extended featurettes. Shows you the back of it. The bonus disc, which they call Hellfire and Brimstone, is again taken from Comic Con. There's some on the set stuff for Ghost Rider, but it's really this stuff over here that gives you the in depth behind the scenes footage. That is the limited edition Ghost Rider DVD exclusive with the bandana. And then the last but not least for Ghost Rider, I have the extended version on Blu-ray in a steel book. It's really the only Blu-ray I have for this one. I do plan on getting another version, but not in any real hurry for it. As you can see, the same cover as the original, just a little closer up. And there's your, all your special features. And that is Ghost Rider starring Nicolas Cage. Alright guys, we are on to Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. The reason why I'm showing you these two at the same time because one, they're the only versions of Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance I have. But also, I'm not sure if you guys knew, but Best Buy originally released the Steelbook right here by itself with nothing inside of it. It even says it's limited um, edition. It's available only at Best Buy um, on July 12th, blah, blah, blah. But what you were supposed to do is go and pick up this version and put it inside of here. So basically you'd have a worthless case. So I'm not sure what was the point. I bought mine on Amazon for about $10. Got both of them. I'm good to go. I haven't opened it up to put the ultraviolet copy into my collection and I'm really not in any big hurry to do so. Now this movie was released in 2012. Nicolas Cage is the only one coming back from the original film and they don't really reference the original film at all. They don't mention Eva Mendes' character, the original Ghost Rider, nothing. Now this movie came um, was directed by Mark Neville Dean. I'm not sure um, if I'm pronouncing that correct, but the only big perk was that they had Idris Elba in this. I love anything with Idris Elba, and other than that, this movie was just over the top and just way, way, way too long. But <laughs> the steel bug looks cool. The 3D edition is great because it is lenticular. As you can see right here, hopefully you're able to get that. But as far as special features go, uh, to see there's none on there. It just tells you really about the ordering procedure to get this copy. I would say for our comic book fans, you definitely want this in your collection, but you don't have to hurry to get it. But I'm actually happy to have it in mind. Stay tuned to the end of the video because I will be showing you all my large box sets. And I have a special Ghost Rider box set from the original to show you guys. But this is Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. Alright guys, I have only one box set, gift set, limited edition, collector's edition, call it what you will, from the Ghost Rider. There is another one that I'm looking for, I'll mention that after I show you this. But this one is the Ghost Rider limited edition gift set, so it's kind of mixing everything in one. This one comes with the Ghost Rider bust. I will um, definitely be showing you guys an image of it, hopefully right now, because the, the packaging is just like the other DVDs. I mean, there's really nothing new to this edition except for the bust. Shows you which edition you're going to be getting. I showed you earlier that I already have this um, one separately as a DVD, but it's really this bust that you are going to be getting that you pay the money for. Now, I think I only paid $25 for this. So it's not an expensive piece to get. It's just getting hard to get it unopened. So I'm actually happy to have it unopened. I might actually look for the bus by itself because I am finding out from uh, fellow YouTubers that this edition sealed up can be um, worth up to about $100 to $150. So that's awesome. And I could get the bus by itself for like maybe $10, $15. But that's going to be my Ghost Rider limited edition gift set. Now the other one that they did has the motorcycle, which hopefully I'll have an image of that one up. I really do want to get that, even though the 
The motorcycle is a poor quality. It's not molded very well. It's like a mass production mold to it, so it doesn't have a high detail to it. But that one is really rare, really hard to find. So if you guys have seen that, or if you have it, and you may want to do a trade or sell it, hit me in that comment section below and let me know. But this is the Ghost Rider Limited Edition gift set with the Ghost Rider bust. Alright guys, we are on to what in my opinion is the movie that helped bring the Marvel Cinematic Universe to the big screen. This is the 1998 release of Blade starring Wesley Snipes and Stephen Dorff. This movie was directed by Stephen Nordenton. Another trivia question, what other superhero film did he direct? Now this movie actually, when it came out, no one knew this was a Marvel film. It was never released as a Marvel film. It was actually just released on its own, given time to grow, given time to breathe, and it wasn't until people realized, oh my god, this movie actually is connected to Marvel, that more people started to watch it. I remember before it came out, the DVD um, at a comic book convention kept showing the trailer over and over again, and it really got people interested in it, which is a great way to get people on board with a film that is, by a lot of standards, low budget, but this shows that you don't need a lot of money to make a great film. And before this movie came out, Blade was actually a 70s exploitation character. He didn't look anything like this. But after this movie came out, suddenly Blade completely changed his look and started looking like Wesley Snipes. Also, Blade is now in the Avengers. <laughs> Who would have thought that was happening? For a character that came out in the 70s that had a fro and was really just known for like cheesy one-liners, it's now a bona fide Marvel superhero. But this is the 1989 release of Blade. This is actually a, I think it's a dual sided disc. Has a ton of special features on here. I love this movie so much and I actually love the release of this version. Now, next up, we got the 2002 release of the sequel, Blade. This one actually, uh, when it came out, I didn't think it could get any better than the original one. But Guillermo del Toro came in and directed this movie and made this one of the greatest sequels that's out there. This movie actually had um, wonderful action in it. It really helped build the mythology of the characters. One thing I didn't say about the original um, Blade film is Chris Christopherson as Whistler. Now Chris Christopherson's character was killed in the first um, Blade film. In the second one they bring him back and he's a vampire but they find a way to cure him. Spoiler. I think he's like probably one of the, I wouldn't even say a sidekick, he's like an Alfred, but cranky, <laughs> and helps him build all his stuff. This also has Norman Reddus, for all you uh, fans of The Walking Dead out there, you know exactly who he is. And the great Ron Perlman is in this film as well. I mean, this movie just topped it as far as action and storyline, it's actually better than the original Blade. This is a two disc collection. So much action in here, so great. I mean, I really, I mean, I know I'm saying great so much, but I really, really, really want people to know this is a Marvel film. And yes, I do mean it when I say this movie is what helped make the Marvel Cinematic Universe come to life because without Blade, I don't know if we would have had X-Men. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna say I'm wrong, but I doubt it. <laughs> this is Blade 2. And then finally, we have ourselves Blade Trinity. Now, yeah, it's it's not great. You know, it's unfortunately a way not to do with, um, a sequel. Unfortunately, when movies start going into these trilogies, the third one is usually the worst one, and unfortunately, this is an example of it. This is the unrated version. This movie came out in 2004. Obviously, Wesley Snipes comes back to reprise his role as Blade. You have Ryan Reynolds and Jessica Biel coming in, and they were, I think, trying to set up a spinoff with these characters of the Midnight Suns. This was actually a really, really good um, introduction to the characters, just a really bad story. Now, this movie was directed by David S. Goyer, who has, unfortunately, a bad history of trying to direct movies. He should just write them. He actually helped uh, write Batman Begins and... Um, I believe Batman and Dark Knight as well as The Dark Knight um, Rises 
So he does know how to do some good movies, but he just should not direct. <laughs> um, no, it also had, um, I want to make sure I have his name correct, Dominic Purcell, who you all know as Heat Wave on Legends of Tomorrow and The Flash for the CW. He plays Dracula. Yeah, it's just bad. <laughs> it's bad. I'm sorry. I, I will say it. Ryan Reynolds actually, in my opinion, is, makes the movie um, as Hannibal King, I believe. It, it had the potential, but it was just not performed well. Parker Posey's in here, who is unfortunately one of my least favorite actresses out there because no matter what she does, she plays the same type of character, and that kind of just falls flat after a while. And you can even tell that Wesley Snipes was kind of just phoning it in. But I want to make sure I have all three films in the trilogy. So these are your Blade movies. There are some, or some collector's editions out there. I unfortunately don't have them. These are the only versions of Blade that I have. At the end of the video, I'm going to show you a wish, wish list. I wish I could say that better. Of things that I am looking for. So stay tuned. And that's going to do it for Blade. Alright guys, we are on to the 2003 Ang Lee directed Hulk movie. This is a movie that has gotten friends into fights. This movie is split straight down the middle. I like to give it a little bit of slack myself simply because it is the first time we ever had the Hulk on a big screen. Granted, he is CG, but up till now we only had the Incredible Hulk TV series starring Bill Bixby as Bruce Banner and the great Lou Ferrigno as the Incredible Hulk. So give it a little bit of slack. The story, pretty terrible, not gonna lie. Not something I wanted, but Ang Lee was kind of going for something a little bit more internal instead of going for a traditional superhero film. We did have Hulk dogs. <laughs> you know, we have Eric Banner as Bruce Banner slash The Incredible Hulk because again, it's CG, so he did motion uh, capture for it. You had Jennifer Connelly as Betty Ross. You had Sam Elliott as Thunderbolt Ross. And then you had, which was just, Bizarre Nick Nolte as Brian Banner, Bruce Banner's father, who eventually becomes, even though they don't actually say it, he becomes the absorbing man. A little off on that, but I love the way Ang Lee directed this film. He used comic book panels to tell you the story, to actually lead you to the next scene. So it, was, it had its merits. Now this is the two disc special edition DVD. The first one that came out, I don't have a lot of editions for this right now just because I'm just not really looking for them, but this is actually a two disc again collection a lot of great special features on here And I show you how they created the Hulk. I will say again. It's the first time we actually had a fully CG Hulk So, you know Even though you may not like the story give them credit for giving this uh, a try in the first place So that is a two disc special edition DVD of the Hulk my only other addition is a beautiful Japanese import. This Incredible Hulk is actually sealed, so I can't open it up. So hopefully I'll be able to put some images up on the screen so you can actually see what this looks like. It's basically a big piece of plastic, but it is a three disc collection. There's your sides. And the back of it. You get some really cool stuff in here. You do get a reprint of the first, um, issue of the Incredible Hulk. You get some great cards in here that gives you some storyboards for it. Doesn't cost a lot. It's really more of the import. So if you can, see if you can find an American seller on eBay or Amazon who has this. But it is definitely worth it because it just looks really cool and it displays really well. Maybe one of these days I might open it, but I doubt it because it loses value when you open it. But this is my three disc Hulk Ang Lee directed box set. All right, guys, we are on to The Punisher. This 1989 release with Dolph Lundgren in the title role as The Punisher is a cult classic film, in my opinion. Also starring Louis Gossip Jr., this movie directed by Mark Goldblatt is a bare-bones, straightforward Punisher film. Yes, yeah, 1989 cheesiness, but it's great action film. They actually just did a straightforward story. He's already The Punisher when the movie starts. We get a very quick um, recap of an origin 
but we just go right into the story of him just killing bad guys really love this edition a lot of different um, editions are out mine is a Korean edition I believe if you've seen any others and you guys know where to get them uh, for a good price please let me know in the comment section below love this movie that is the Punisher but also one thing you need to know never at any point in this movie does he wear the skull t-shirt for some reason they did not have the rights to actually put him in the skull t-shirt I'm not sure why but the only time you see skulls are on the little throwing daggers he has so they kind of worked it in a couple of times in the movie they do uh, refer to him as the Punisher but if you were were not paying attention you wouldn't know but this is the 1989 edition of the Punisher next up we have the Thomas Jan edition this one actually was directed by Jonathan Hen I want to say it correctly Hensley I'm gonna actually have it down below I probably mispronounced um, the name for that I do apologize this has Thomas Jan actually in full Punisher garb John Travolta playing a typical bad guy mobster anyone could have played this unfortunately in 2004 this was actually when John Travolta was taking every role given to him not really doing a great job in it this movie is okay actions all right stories all right but for some reason they changed the origin and had um his entire family killed at a family reunion i don't know why you ever do a comic book adaption and then you change the origin now they do stick to some things that are from punisher warzone and the earlier punisher films or comic books but to me this was just it was all right here is the back of it you do get a lot of special features in this that do show you how they did connect some of the scenes with the comic book especially this right here but it just it fell flat I remember even being in a the theater and people were upset with this movie but <laughs> you have this edition there is an extended cut edition which honestly I couldn't tell you what was added to it it's if there's anything in there that you guys know that was added that I just don't know please let me know but this edition I really did like because the slipcover is the skull itself. It does slide off and then it opens up forward. Instead of opening like a book, you can actually flip it open. Has a lot of great special features. There is an extended um, featurette here. It says 17 minutes. Honestly, I really don't know. <laughs> but there's like um, an animated intro that was cut out of the movie done by Tim Bradstreet who at the time was, and in my opinion, it still is, one of the all-time greatest Punisher artists out there. Definitely get this version to just check that out alone. It's better than the movie itself. It really gives you insight to Punisher before he became a Punisher. That is the extended cut. Now this one I believe is another um, Korean or Japanese import. This one I got on eBay simply because it was really cheap. It had a nice, um, nice cover to it which is very reminiscent to the extended cut but it's not the extended cut as far as I know that gives you all the info right there if you guys want to pause it and read that but it's basically the same as on the back of every Punisher movie but those are your extended cut and your import then I do also have the blu-ray edition I am a completionist and it's a high definition uh, version so I definitely had to add it to my connect collection but it's basically just the regular edition, not the extended cut. There's that one. And that is going to be leading you into Punisher Warzone. Now this DVD edition I really like because it's a widescreen and full screen edition in one set instead of buying them individually. Um, in this one, I really did like this one because Ray Stevenson actually played and looked more like Punisher than Dolph Lundgren and Thomas Jan combined. He really looked like a Tim Bradstreet drawing come to life. They actually do have some uh, special features that shows you Tim Bradstreet's art based on uh, Ray Stevenson. But if you look at any other Punisher comic books at that time, he looked just like this. It was fantastic. The movie uh, came out in 2008, directed by Lexi Alexander. Fun fact, Lexi Alexander, female director, I believe she was a kickboxer or she had martial arts uh, background training. And that's awesome to have someone who knows how to, 
who is an action or at least a martial artist doing an action film. This one I liked much better than the um, Thomas Jan version because it's more straightforward, you get jigsaw in it, it's more comic book based and he's it's not played a, not a lot of laughs in here there are still comedic points there's uh, some comedic actors in here which i don't really like but compared to the other two this one was more of the punisher that we know and love dominic west did play jigsaw now always i did pick up the blu-ray this is a two disc special edition this one obviously is giving you all the special features and the special disc it's a digital copy, but that is going to do it for Punisher. All right, guys, we are on to a cult classic film. This is Howard the Duck. This movie came out in 1986, directed by Willard Hayek, actually with George Lucas producing and doing the special effects for this. Now, as far as I'm concerned, they only released this as a special edition. I'm not sure what's so special about it. It's not hard to find. You can actually get this at a lot of used stores or if you can find it online. For less than $10, you can have this. I believe they finally did release this on Blu-ray, but I actually like having this on DVD. Hey, there's the back of it. This movie um, starred Ed Gale playing the voice of Howard the Duck. Leah Thompson was in this movie. Really a lot of forgettable people in this, a forgettable movie. But one thing I really um, was surprised to find in this is that Tim Robbins actually appeared in this movie. If you guys know which part he played, next trivia question, leave it in the comment section below. But this one actually had, you know, a decent amount of special features. It has a look at the uh, making of it, releasing the movie. A lot of archival um, pieces are in here. I'm not sure if they really went into the history of the actual comic book itself but it is what it is this is the 1986 Howard the Duck DVD alright guys we are on to Captain America this is a movie that actually came out in 1990 no connection to the Marvel Cinematic Universe this movie actually was directed by Albert Pune it was actually had Matt Salinger starring as Captain America that last name sounds familiar, but that's because Matt Salinger is the son of J.D. Salinger, the famous author. But this movie had a ton of uh, recognizable stars at the time. I mean, you had Ronnie Cox, Ned Beatty, Darren McGavin were, was in this movie, Bill, Bill Muni was in this movie. Just, it, it, oh my god, it just fell into the trappings of 90s Marvel movies. Just... It stuck kind of to the plot of a comic book, but executed so poorly. Now, it I don't know which one is worse. If this one starring Matt Salinger or the TV movies with Red Brown. Let me know in the comment section, because they're all hard to watch. I think the uh, the Red Brown ones might be a step above. <laughs> in this one, you had uh, Scott Poland um, as the Red Skull. But in this one, the Red Skull's Italian. Let that sink in, people. The Red Skull is Italian. The funniest part in this movie is the fact that twice in this movie, Captain America steals someone's car by having them pull over because he's going to be sick. The, oh my god, this is just... There's no way to make this movie sound good. It's just not good. <laughs> it's just a one-disc collection. I mean, if you just look at that, and you'll be good. It It's just so, so bad. The Red Skull just beats his ass throughout the movie. <laughs> I, I'm not going to go any further into it. This is my Captain America Collector's Edition. Enjoy. Enjoy.